The UK Independence Party has managed to win over the hearts of the majority of the British public, and that's according to a recent poll. RT's Tess Arcelia reports on the sweeping popularity of the former dark horse of the country's political scene. Europe finds itself at a crucial juncture. The European Parliament elections is only four months away amid economic turbulence, high unemployment and some would say an existential crisis. And Europeans have been increasingly directing their anger at the European Union. Eurosceptic parties have gained ground in countries like France, Germany, Greece, Netherlands, to name a few. And here in the UK, the UK Independence Party or UKIP have find itself being voted as the people's most favorite political party in recent polls. Now, UKIP's leader, Nigel Farage, he's adamant that the party's win in last year's local elections of about 25% of the vote is what he calls, quote-unquote, a game-changer. And he's determined to repeat the success on the European stage. Europe does now matter, um, and the debate on Europe has changed. Uh, it, you know, we're not just talking about treaties, we're talking about cost, we're talking about open-door immigration, we're talking about control of our businesses. So things have changed, and also... Also, you've seen the emergence of UKIP. Now, UKIP has benefited from the fact that European elections are about Europe and has benefited from the fact that European elections are contested on the basis of proportional representation. So, last time round, we shocked everybody by coming second across the United Kingdom. I mean, nobody could believe it. Even I was a bit surprised. Um, and now we've got a prospect where there is actually a possibility that UKIP could top the poll in a national election. So that's got everybody thinking. But David Cameron's already promised a referendum if the Conservatives win. If I were somebody who would vote yes, get out of the EU, why wouldn't I just vote for the Conservatives then? Because David Cameron has promised a referendum before. In fact, he gave a cast-iron guarantee uh, that if he became Prime Minister, there'd be a referendum on the Lisbon Treaty, and he didn't do it. So he's broken his promise once on this, and people don't trust him. They don't believe him. They don't think he's going to win the next general election anyway. Uh, what he's tried to do, in effect, is to kick this into the long grass four years down the road. We've got to bring together the right and the left of politics together under a banner of independence, freedom, and democracy. On the other hand, some in the pro-EU camp say that the surge in support for anti-EU parties in the upcoming elections is exaggerated and that it will not prevent the quote-unquote moderate majority from moving ahead with EU integration. However, one issue that does need to be addressed is that of voter turnout. Only 43% voted in 2009, the last elections, which is the lowest turnout since elections started in 1979, potentially opening it up to questions on democratic legitimacy. Reporting from London, I'm Tessa Arcilia.